All right. So we hear so much about the share market and the property market in our daily news doses. But when it comes to our financial well-being, the market, which is probably the most important to us, is the labor market, because after all, our jobs are what pay the bills. So joining us to discuss the latest developments in this space is Callum Pickering, Senior Economist at Indeed. Callum, thanks for joining us on the Savings Tip Jar. G'day, boys. Thanks for having me on the show. Thanks for joining us, Callum. So, um, over the past, you know, six to twelve months, there's been a lot of talk. It's kind of died off a bit recently about the so-called Great Resignation slash, you know, the jobs hiring boom. Uh, what have you seen at Indeed so far? Is this coming to an end, or was this even a, a real thing to start with? Uh, the the Great Resignation. Uh, there was probably a good twelve months there where I think every time I spoke to clients and I talked to a lot of businesses and recruiters as part of my job. All they wanted to know about was the the great resignation. Was it a thing? Was it happening? What did it mean for them? And the truth was we looked through our data uh, all the time and it was really hard to identify in Australia. Mm. Um, We get real-time data on employer and and job seeker behaviour. We couldn't see it. Job seekers weren't doing anything unusual, at least with regards to the Indeed website. Now, that was a little while ago. Obviously, today we have a little bit more uh, information around what um, the Great Resignation actually looks like. The ABS has a range of data that's come out as well. And the truth is it's it hasn't really been a, a thing. Um, job mobility has picked up a little bit over the past year. About 9.5% of Australian workers changed jobs over the past year, which is the highest since 2012. Now, at first glance, you think that's a bit of a tick in favour of the great resignation, but Mm. the reality is job mobility today is well below what it was in, say, the first decade of this century. You know, from 2000 to 2010, it averaged around 11 to 12% of the workforce changing jobs every year compared to about 9.5% today. So what what we've seen is is really just a sort of mild pickup in, in job mobility rather than any sort of uh, sizable change in behaviour. Now, all that said, while the great resignation absolutely wasn't a thing, the jobs boom obviously was. Um, almost every labour market metric we have is doing things we haven't seen before or haven't seen in a long time. We've seen extraordinary employment growth over the past couple of years. We've seen amazing job creation. Um, and certainly there's a lot more jobs out there today unfilled than there was before the pandemic began or or at any point in Australia's uh, recent economic history. So, um, yeah, the jobs boom, absolutely massive, great resignation, not really a thing. Uh, that's interesting because yeah, I, I remember just a you know a short while ago, it seemed like every other person was 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 posting about the great resignation on LinkedIn. Mm. It, I mean, it provided a lot of content fodder there. Uh, people are talking about that. Um, but as for so the current situation we're in, um, for a while it's felt like uh, you know the employees have all, all the power. It's an employees market; they can really pick and choose where they want to go. But I do just get the sense. Um, well, I mean, just sort of seeing anecdotes from people mentioning that um, it seems like it's a bit of a slowdown, you know, less contracts, less work available for, for certain businesses. Do you get the sense that this is going to this is going to turn, start turning soon? Like, could we see uh, an unemployment rate, you know, around the 4% mark by the end of this year? We're certainly seeing a little bit of a shift. Now, I'd, I'd still argue that this is primarily still a job seekers market in terms of who has the, the most power. But the dynamic is certainly shifted compared to where it was last year or, or the year before that. Um, the, the imbalance between demand and supply in the labour market has began to converge uh, a little bit. And so there is this ex- expectation that the unemployment rate is going to drift upwards a little bit over the remainder of the year. My expectations are a little bit boring. Um, they do align a little bit with what the, the Reserve Bank of Australia is, is currently saying. They think the unemployment rate will get to around 4% by year end. I think will either be slightly below or, or slightly above that, um, which I think ultimately is is a pretty good result given how challenging the economic environment has been. Um, the fact that the jobs market has proven to be so resilient um, is is just a, a really good sign about you know how well we've absorbed the impact of this high inflation uh, environment, the increase in interest rates as, as well. So it's only natural that the labour market is going to slow down, but it's slowing down from a you know a really strong position. 
Um, we've seen things like, um, you know, job postings on Indeed have, have come down about a, a quarter from their peak, but they're still well above pre-pandemic level. So they're, they're still really healthy numbers, albeit not quite as strong as they were 12 months ago. So I think if we can keep the unemployment rate at around 4% by the end of the year, I think we should be really happy with that. Sure. And we'll move slightly now to the um, the whole immigration sort of um thing that's happening right now you know there's you know supposedly a three to four hundred thousand people arriving in australia um this year uh you know coming off the back of pretty much no one arriving on any um, real basis in the pandemic um so are these people filling jobs that need to be filled like i i've noticed anecdotally you know every shop window has a has a job posting job vacancy sign but maybe um a lot of the immigration seems to be skilled and um, skilled labour. Um, so, you know, maybe not so many job postings there where, you know, the, the jobs that everyone wants aren't really there. Um, so what have you noticed with Indeed? Um, are immigrants filling the jobs that need to be filled or is it a bit different? Yeah, so with regards to this, I think it's it's worth mentioning that um, the, the skill and talent shortages that have emerged over the past couple of years have been widespread. You know, they apply to basically every industry and, and every occupation. So there's been a real need for people across the board. Um, historically, when we thought about skill shortages, we thought about sectors such as, you know, tech and engineering and, and healthcare. But today it's it's a very different dynamic. And so it's actually really difficult for Im- immigrants or new immigrants to not be filling some sort of role where there is a, a significant shortage, no matter what industry they go to. Um, so that, that's very different today compared to to a few years ago. There is obviously still a, a really strong skill component to it. Um, the the federal government does target that, and so they're you know they're pretty consistently looking for healthcare talent, and tech talent, and engineering talent. And that's always a big part of um, what the um, the immigration system looks like with regards to, to workers coming to Australia. Um, but the, the sheer number of people who are coming in at the moment does mean that we are feeling a, a lot more. Um, a lot of you know very different roles. We're also seeing a lot of uh, workers coming into you know sectors such as retail and hospitality, backpackers coming to Australia and they're, and they're working while they're they're here and, and things like that. And it's not fully addressing the the skill shortages, um, not by a long shot, but it's certainly helping re- recruiters um, find it just a little bit easier to to find talent. And obviously, at the moment, the the economy is creating enough jobs where we can absorb that immigration intake and so there really hasn't been much downside to you know so many people coming into the country at the moment because the jobs are there um, and they need to be filled now i wanted to ask you something about um uh, productivity we keep hearing in the media uh, a lot of the moment that they keep saying that uh labor productivity is is dropping quite drastically what's that a symptom of is it is it wages going up or is it um the fact that it's a job seekers market maybe people feel you know less inclined to work so hard in their jobs or um or is it something else entirely is it is it the i mean we keep hearing about the, the whole working from home revolution actually people saying maybe more people working from home is is hurting productivity what's what are your thoughts on this yeah, there's there's probably a few dynamics at play here that could be contributing to it. Um, working from home being one of them. Um, it obviously works really well in, in certain industries and occupations. Um, I've worked from home for the past six years, and I don't think it impacts my productivity at all. Um, but it's likely to have had some impact upon other workers in in other industries, um, and that's obviously been the the real big shift in what the job what the uh, jobs market looks like today compared to a, a few. Uh, years ago. So that could certainly be one reason why um, productivity has um, declined. Some people would say the fact that um, the unemployment rate is now so low could also be a reason. So we're bringing in um, perhaps some of the the less productive workers, um, less productive marginal worker coming into the the workforce and uh, maybe they're not performing at the same level as um, you know existing workers. So that, that could also be a factor. Uh, but the truth is, I mean, if it was easy to diagnose, it would be easy to fix. And there haven't been too many, you know, great ideas coming out from, you know, federal state governments around improving um, productivity growth in Australia. So that suggests that it's probably a pretty complicated thing that's that's going on that doesn't have any uh, easy answers. Sure. You know, like just personally, Dom and I are in the office at the moment and we just came back from a morning tea. So I can't say how productive that was, you know, just chatting around eating cake <laughs> for half an hour. 
But um, it's kind of interesting that you said that, you know, with the strong unemployment rate, um, you know, there's a lot, like there's some more uh, or less productive workers coming in being able to find a job. It's, it's kind of interesting how you can, how such a strong figure, you know, three and a half percent, 3.7 percent can kind of be a bit of a negative in that regard. And it's kind of like how everyone interprets the data. Um, yeah, and, it, and one, it is an interesting one. I feel bad sort of talking about the least productive yeah. or, <laughs> uh, workers in society coming in and that being a bad thing. But, you know, it, it is a possibility. Um, one thing I'd also touch upon with regards to productivity is that most businesses have been dealing with, you know, considerable staff shortages um, over the past couple of years. And, and what that can do is some, create some sort of dysfunction in the way businesses operate, um, which can also impact productivity as well. So is is there a fix for that? Like, is there a light at the end of the tunnel around all this data? You know, will, uh, you know, like the RBA says to return to a, a non-inflationary rate of employment, it's, for, it's up to four and a half percent. Is there kind of a, a, a fix to this productivity? Is there a, is there a, um, a way to have, you know, strong, strong job, jobs figures while also having um, other areas that are healthy in the labor market? Look, I think it's something that, the the imbalances will diminish over time, um, but there's no real silver, silver bullet there. You can't fix it overnight, um, which is unfortunate. It's going to be something that's going to slowly diminish over a, a number of years, and we'll we'll look back from uh, the vantage point of 2025 or 2026, and um, you know the labour market will begin to look like something that resembled what it was before the the pandemic began. Um, and so you won't have these widespread skill shortages. You won't have jobs going unfilled for six months, 12 months, um, and, and businesses will start to operate the way they, they should um, versus the, the current situation where there's just too many roles that aren't being filled for very long periods of time, uh, making it difficult for them to operate at full capacity um, and operate the way they should. And uh, Callum, just finally, what's your outlook on wages growth? Obviously, uh, you know, a lot of em- employees uh, would like to see that um, remaining strong. But uh, I mean, while it might be strong, the, the actual number itself, it's, um, you know, when when you look at real wages growth, it's it's been negative and people's um, wages have been falling behind, uh, you know, the, the rising cost of living. So, you know, it was one of those things that the RBA seemed a bit uh, worried that wages growth will rise pretty strong and, and bake in uh, these high rates of inflation. Um, it, obviously, you know, there were some people contesting that, uh, the unions. Um, so, yeah, just give us your take really here. What, what, what's wages growth going to do in the in the next few months? Well, I, I never thought I'd be complaining about annual wage growth of 3.6%, but here we are. That's what happens when inflation's clocking in at 6%, 7%. Um, and inflation-adjusted wages have gone back to 13-year lows. Now, in in terms of what I think is going to happen over, say, the next six months, over the remainder of the year, private sector wages, annual uh, private sector wages should increase to around 4%, maybe even slightly above that. Public sector wages continue to lag behind. They're they're struggling to push through the the 3% level. Um, they might go slightly higher, but but not by much. So you're looking at a 4% private sector, 3 maybe 3.1% um, public sector sort of dynamic. Um, so that there are still some, some wage pressures out there. Um, we, we saw in the June quarter that newly negotiated um, wages were up by 4.5%. Um, so that, that was a big number. That's the biggest we've really seen since the global financial crisis. Began. So it does appear as though wage growth overall is going to continue to, to pick up over at least the next six months. Um, and, and certainly while the, the labor market remains tight, you know, in that, that 4% range, um, we wouldn't expect wage growth to um, soften too much. Um, so it'll be interesting to sort of see how that, that plays out. Um, the Reserve Bank is, a, is correct in, in being a little bit concerned about what wage growth could do next year, particularly as other sources of inflation come off. Um, They're very concerned around service sector inflation, a a key component of that being uh, wage growth. And obviously right now, the the wage growth we are seeing is inconsistent with the productivity figures that we're seeing. Um, So the the wage gains aren't justified by productivity growth, um, which which does mean that uh, that can create problems for inflation. Um, going forward. So it'll be an interesting dynamic that's that's going to play out over the next 12 months or so. Um, We really do need to see that productivity figure begin to turn around so that we can justify these higher wage gains. And so that doesn't trigger 
iron flashing. There we go. No silver bullet. Callum Pickering, thanks for joining us on the Savings Tip Jar podcast. Thanks for having me on the program. Cheers, Callum. Appreciate it. Thanks. No worries.